This is the man, a huge wooden effigy, torched to the climax of the Burning Man Festival. The blaze begins with a spectacle of flame created by some of the best fire performers in the world. This is why I came here. This time, I want to be one of them. Since I applied late and don't have a group, there's only one person who can possibly let me in. The mistress of fire herself, Crimson Rose. Crimson Rose decides which groups can perform before the man is burned. She tells me my only chance is to find a fire group who will let me join them. But that won't be easy. I think it's a real long shot, actually. <laughs> animal control! Will somebody please call animal control? Burning Man started more than 20 years ago with a few dozen people building and burning art on a San Francisco beach. Now, nearly 50,000 people come to be a part of the most dangerous art festival on the planet. For one week, this barren desert becomes Black Rock City. Each year, the festival goers come together for the most important ritual, burning the man. There were only two groups from Canada, and I wanted to spin fire with one of them. I found Amanda Sinclair, a member of the group Radiant Heat from Vancouver. Because I'm a belly dancer, I thought I want to find a way to combine fire and belly dancing. So I dreamed up the fire veil, I researched it, I found fireproof fabric, and then the first time that I lit it up and it worked and it didn't burn me, and it was really exhilarating. She told me where to find Radiant Heat's rehearsal a couple of nights later. With time to kill, I started looking for answers. Who are these people? Why do they love fire? I started with one of Canada's best and brightest pyromaniacs, Jonathan Schechter from Toronto. He helped take the hit arcade game Dance Dance Revolution and set it on fire. Meet Dance Dance Immolation. We were scratching our chins going, if only we could shoot fire at the people. And then it occurred to us that we actually could. I think the biggest kick I get out of it is people who've never heard about it, they stumble across it for the first time and it just, it breaks their notion of what is possible. They, they just suddenly go, oh my God, you can do this? Burning Man attracts fire artists like moths to a flame. This is the Burninator. Almost two kilometers of flamethrowers run by a single laptop computer. The Serpent Mother shoots flames down its spine as you control its giant robotic head. And the pendulum, towering 12 meters high, swings flames across the night sky. In daylight, I searched out a quieter form of fire worship and found Susan Giffen and her daughter Jennifer from Halifax. They help hang street lamps that illuminate the temporary desert city. It does provide a, a sense of security and safety for people um, that I think is critically important against the backdrop of that kind of chaos. So it's safe, but we still get to play with fire a little bit. So. <laughs> Finally, it was time for Vancouver's Radiant Heat to rehearse. I asked their leader, Natalie, to tell me why she loved fire. Having the heat of the flame um, around you, the element of danger, it keeps you present in that moment. And there, you can't think about anything else. But Natalie said it was too late to add me into their act. There was only one Canadian group left to ask, and I hadn't even found them yet. I searched and searched down streets with names like Chance, Fate, and Guess. But after hours under the scorching desert sun, fate brought me no closer. Yes, I, 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 I don't know. My best chance of making it into the final fire circle is with a group or conclave called Primal Fire out of Victoria. They're supposed to be camped at 9 o'clock and guess. We're here at 9 o'clock and guess, and guess what? They're nowhere to be found. By the time I gave up, my heat exhaustion was so bad I collapsed for 14 hours in a feverish sleep. Fire good, cook meat, mmm. Later, I found strange encouragement from a Calgarian known as Ranger Disco. We wouldn't have anything if we hadn't discovered fire. We'd still be eating nuts and berries. Fire is, is that primal connection to life. And then at last, the connection I'd been looking for. Sarah and Michael Hammond with Primal Fire. 
Impressing them was my last shot. Uh, I don't know. I think uh, we'll have to see what you can do. It's just about time for the burn, and I made it. This is the biggest spin of my life. When I was a kid in Sunday school, I used to sing about the Spirit of God burning like a fire. I think fire touches something deep inside us, an ancient instinct passed on from ancestors who needed fire to survive. Maybe their fear and fascination with flames still captivates us. Maybe we're all pyromaniacs.